Time to meet the men from the Ministry of the General Assistance Department where those two skilled executives, Lennox Brown and Lamb, are facing the challenge of another day's work. I've got it, man. I've got it. Well, I hope it's not catching. <laughs> I've got something special for the office. Oh, not that weird invention of yours, is it? Huh? That plastic skull with the candle inside for warming your bowler hat before you wear it? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is new. Look. My word, an electric kettle. Yes. By Jove, too, that is useful. <laughs> well done, well done. Mm, isn't it a beauty? Yeah. I saved up my cigarette coupons. 3,500 of them, and I got this. Cigarette coupons? That's right, 3,500 of them. But you don't smoke. I know, but I did want this electric kettle. <laughs> oh, God, I really am. It boils in one minute. Or three, if you put water in it. <laughs> By the way, the permanent undersecretary should be dropping in about now. Oh, Sir Gregory, oh dear, what does he want? Well, I don't know, but his secretary said he'd call in at 11. So we'd better tidy the office, you see. Now, move those beer bottles from the in tray. Yeah, they're empty. Hmm? Uh, I'll put them in the out tray. <laughs> oh, there's one half full. I'll put that in pending. Oh. No, no, two. Get them all out of sight, will you? Put them in the, the map cupboard. Put no, them in the map right cupboard. Right you are, man. Uh, and you'd better get those magazines off the filing cabinet. What? Yeah, uh, those copies of International Playgirls, you... Better put them in the drawer. By Jove, yes, I'm glad you thought of that, you know. That could... Oh, there you are, Lennox uh, Brown. Oh, oh yes, uh, good morning, Sir Gregory. What's uh, that you're putting away so hurriedly? Uh, oh, uh, some rather vital documents, Sir Gregory, full of astounding figures. <laughs> Exports, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, now they're the sort of figures you and Lamb should be getting to grips with. Oh, we should, we should, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we will, we will, Sir Gregory. Now listen, both of you. Exports are what I'm here to talk about. As you know, it's vital we export more. We must seize every chance that comes our way. Yes. That's why this Marboni business is so vital. Marboni? It's a very important new state in the Far East. Oh, yes, you must have heard the song too. Marboni lies over the ocean. <laughs> Lennox Brown! Sorry, sorry. This is no laughing matter. Can't do it. The president of Marboni needs certain vehicles for his defense force. Oh. Small, silent ones to transport equipment through jungle in case of invasion. Ah. At the moment, there's nothing to fill the bill. I suggest those big armoured vehicles with guns in front. Tanks. Don't mention it, Sir Gregory. <laughs> Don't dribble, lamb. I meant you were referring to tanks, but they're too big and noisy for the job. As I said, so far, no one's found a vehicle they like. Now, the first country to come up with something gets a big export order. I want you to make sure it's Britain. Now, start thinking. Oh, dear me, this sounds like a problem, too. I think I'll take a spot of leave. Uh, excuse me, sir, could I borrow the telephone directory? Well, of course, Mildred. Desk need propping up again? No, sir. It's me boyfriend, Bernard. He's just heard about the Permissive Society, and he's asked me to look up their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, too? Right. Mildred's going to ring up the Permissive Society. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Mildred... <laughs> They're probably not on the phone. <laughs> now, look, stop wasting time, Mildred, and get on with the important tasks, will you? We haven't made our tea yet. Yeah. Well, I can't, can I? Can't? Can't make tea? What are you talking about? Haven't you seen Sir Gregory's memo? Staff in this building are now forbidden to make tea in offices. What? Oh, Mildred, don't joke about serious matters. You know a sudden shock starts Mr Lennox Brown's forehead twitching. <laughs> Look, here's your copy of the memo on the windowsill. Yeah, don't dismantle that, Mildred. It's the best paper dart I've made today. <laughs> Two, this is important. Let me see that, please. Let me see. Careful, that. sir. You've gone all white and trembling like the canteen blancmange. <laughs> She's right, too. It says, the practice of making tea in offices will cease forthwith. Oh, this is awful. How can we fill in the time? Well, that's what it's all about. Sir Gregory says tea-making takes too much time. It'll take even longer going down to the canteen. Mrs. Bing won't let you leave the counter till you've heard about her chest. <laughs> yes, well, that's out, too. <laughs> Listen. Henceforth, the canteen will open for lunch only. Morning and afternoon tea will be dispensed from trolleys on each floor to reduce disruption of work. Uh, tea trolleys? Oh, that means tea from an urn. Oh, absolutely ghastly. Now then, you lot, cue on the right for tea. And now shoving up the passage. 
This ain't the perishing rich, you know. I know, but I've seen her before, too. Yeah. She was in the canteen. Yeah. They took her off the main counter because her dumplings kept slipping in the custard. <laughs> They put her on the yoghurt. <laughs> ah, now then, madam, uh, I'll have one tea with milk, four sugars, and, you know, middling to strong, please. You'll take what you're flaming well given. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, what's this floating on the top? Oh, it's my cigarette ash, most likely. <laughs> it won't do you no harm. Well, really, I must protect... All this. right, <laughs> give the cup back and I'll blow it out for no, you. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Are these the only cakes you have, madam? Yes, and stop fingering me fancies. <laughs> do you want one or do you not? <laughs> no, thank you. They look a trifle dusty. Well, there won't be any fresh, not till this lot's eaten. So suit yourselves. Brothers, as your union representative, I put it to you. The management has clearly perverted established industrial processes in abrogating a fundamental tenet of employment conditions without prior arbitration. Don't you agree, Brother Lamb? Oh, absolutely. What's he talking about, one? <laughs> I am talking, Brother Lamb, about the abolition of our right, our right, brothers, to make refreshment in our offices when we choose. We've had this inferior trolley tea for three weeks now, and our members are feeling run down. Most are run down by the tea, but two are run down by the trolley. <laughs> well, what do you suggest, Mr. Druggett? It's time for militant action. Don't you agree, Brother Lamb? No, uh, you don't mean that we should... Uh... Correct, Brother. You took the words right out of my mouth. We should strike. Strike? In the civil service? Well, good Lord, my dear chap. <laughs> We're not workers. <laughs> <laughs> We are in a way, but I mean, strike action is much too drastic. Now, all we need to do is show Sir Gregory that this trolley service isn't acceptable. Now, <clears throat> here's what I suggest. <laughs> Come on out, you layabouts! Tea up! Funny, where are they all this morning? Hello, Mrs. Bolson. Look, where is everyone? Don't try and tell me they're actually working. Tea up! Everyone! A cup of this will put air on your chest and part it down the middle. <laughs> You're wasting your time standing there bowling and shouting, I can tell you. Look, them gentlemen are usually raring to go be 11 o'clock. I dusted me donuts special. <laughs> Haven't you heard, Mrs. Balsam? They're not buying from the trolley anymore. They've organised a boycott. A what? A boycott of your tea trolley. And that includes the typists. It's a girl cot as well. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we'll see about that. Who's behind this? Them two smarmy ones, I shouldn't wonder. Do you see, Mr. Druggett, the boycott's working. When Sir Gregory sees the trolleys just aren't viable, he'll have to withdraw them. Then we can go back to making tea in our offices. Don't you be too sure, brother. <laughs> all right, all right, where are they? What flaming nonsense is this, then? I don't make hands of tea for nothing, you know. Oh, I should hope not, Sister Balsam. I trust you receive a just wage for your labours. Or, should I say, I hope you earn a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you belt up, Sidney Druggett, and crawl back into the woodwork. <laughs> it's these two pinstripe nanas I'm after. Now then, skinny. What's all this about a boycott, eh? It, Answer me that. Go on. Oh, I don't what is know. it? I, I Tell forget. me. Madam, please, please, pushing Mr. Lamb around like that won't help matters. Hey, madam, please. Oh, put him down at once. You don't know where he's been. Oh, thank you, one. Now, if you want the truth, madam, I have to tell you that the tea pervade from your trolley isn't fit for pigs. Oh, isn't it? Then I will go and get some that is. <laughs> Please, just a moment. Let us not descend to the manners of the gutter. We merely wish the authorities to see that their system does not work. We have no quarrel with you, my good woman. I am not a good woman. <laughs> well, you know your private life better than I do. This is your bowler act, is it? Yes, and it's a new one. Please handle it with care. Hey, madam, please, let's stop her too. She's tearing the brim off my bowler. But I can't strike a defenseless woman. Try this on for size. My new bowler. 
It's ruined. Right. Just remember this, my trolley service goes on. Boycott or no boycott, oh. just so long as Sir Gregory says that it goes on. Ho, 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 ho. So, your boycott's working, is it, brother? Best quality it was with a new high crown. We have witnessed the fascist brutality of a typical capitalist lackey. I'll tell you, brothers, the time has come to loosen our chains. I only brushed it this morning. It strikes me that woman's mad. Ha ha! Did you say strike, Brother Lamb? Ha huh? ha! Ah, that's music to my ears. We'll follow you. But, but I don't want anyone to follow me. I don't want to pull any chains. <laughs> Just a minute, just a minute. I still say a strike's too drastic. Now, we'd lose money, remember. There must be other ways to end this business. Look, uh, <clears throat> leave it to me and Mr. Lamb for another 48 hours. I think I've got a plan. Well, that's that. You don't think we were too ruthless, Lamb? Certainly not. Desperate situations call for desperate remedies. Oh, there you are. What's going on? Where have you been? Uh, oh, yes, well, we've only just got in, Mildred. Oh, mm. naughty fibs. Mm? I heard you both come in ever so early this morning on my way to the washroom. And when I came back, you weren't here and I haven't seen you since. Oh, yes, well, now you mention it, I remember, yes, we were in earlier on, but we were... Um, uh, had to go out again. Uh, I had to go out again, yes, yes. In and out, we've been. Like the weather. Uh, like the weather, yes. Just a minute, what is this? What have you both been doing since you came to the office? Nothing. Just the same as usual. I don't believe it. Oh, well, we've been um, dealing with various problems. What about some tea, Mildred? That's another funny thing. Mrs. Balsam's not turned up this morning. No one's getting any tea. Uh, oh, good gracious. Good gracious, yes. Well, now that just shows, doesn't it? I mean, how easily this trolley service breaks down. Yeah, utterly hopeless one. Uh, we must write to Sir Gregory and say so. When I said, what about tea, Mildred, I was offering you a cup. Fresh, office-made tea. Go on. Honestly? Yes, I've got this electric kettle, you know. I put it on as soon as I heard Mrs. Balsam wasn't here. Oh, you are brave. <laughs> it should be boiling any second. If Sir Gregory saw that kettle, he'd shove the spout up your router. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, but uh, Sir Gregory is out this morning. Glory, Perkins! Oh, glory, no, he's not. Quick, two, hide that thing. I can't run the, the plug's jam. Well, then, uh, 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 sit on the kettle. Oh, yes, he mustn't see it. Sit, sit. Sit. Oh, there you are, Linux Barnes. Ah, good morning, Sir Gregory. Uh, excuse me, sir. I'll get back to me desk. Yes, you go and... By George, that girl's miniskirt's rather short, isn't it? Almost up to her shoulder blades, right? Disgraceful. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry her skirt displeases you, sir. Yes. yes. I'll raise it next time I speak to her. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nothing about this export order. Oh, yes. Those vehicles for my bonnet. Oh. Yes. Remember, they must be swift, silent and low to move easily under the jungle foliage. We're working on it, Sir Gregory. Why is Lamb crouched down there like that? Has he gone potty? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. He's doing his yoga, Sir Gregory. Uh, yes, Sir Gregory. It, 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 it helps me to think. Yeah, well, I'm glad something helps. Oh, help. Run, it's boiling. You know, what did he say? <laughs> it's boiling. Uh, but boiling hot. Uh, this uh, warm weather, you know. Yeah. He will keep his winter vest on. <laughs> I, I know nothing about yoga, but it, it's not meant to make your head go purple, is it? Uh, well, now, we are both uh, rather out of sorts this morning, son. Indeed, why? We've had no elevenses, you see. I'm afraid the work rate on the floor will suffer. Mrs. Balsam hasn't turned up. Mrs. Balsam not turned up? I am surprised. Very sound type, I always thought. I'm afraid your trolley system, excellent though it seemed at first, does depend on the human element. One woman fails and the whole staff suffer. Well, I can't understand it. I've always found Mrs. Balsam most reliable. Really? When Lady Pitkin was away, I needed a daily woman. As often as that, Sir Gregory? <laughs> Mrs. Balsam came in and obliged me. I see. <laughs> Are you sure Lamb's all right? There's, there's clouds of steam rising from his behind. <laughs> yes, he does feel the heat, sir. Uh, don't you, too? Ah, yes, I do. Oh, badly. Uh, most odd, most odd. He, he seems to be in a trance. His eyes have a sort of glazed look. <laughs> yes, he is in a trance. It's the yoga, you see. He just switches off. Isn't that so, too? Ah, yes, yes, yes. You can switch off. 
I, off. I've done it. Oh, why didn't I think of that? What's he sitting on? Hmm? Oh, nothing. There's, there's nothing there, Sir Gregory. What? Uh, uh, excuse me a moment. Uh, hello, Lennox Kettle Browning. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, uh, Lennox Browning, Prattling, K Kettling. K <laughs> yeah, just, pardon? Oh, he's here. It's for you, Sir Gregory. Huh? Yeah, your, your secret, sir. Ah. He seems rather upset. Uh -huh. uh, hello, my dear. Not still worrying about our weekend, are you? Huh? What? 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 Did what? What are the scoundrels? What? By heavens, I'll track them down, and when I do, I'll do... Well, uh, no. No, my dear, no. I'll, uh, I'll take some tablets, yes. Yes, I'll, I'll be back soon. Goodbye. You seem upset now, Sir Gregory. I've just heard that Mrs. Balsam has been manhandled. Oh? Who was the unlucky man? This is no laughing matter. No laughing matter. Two masked men lured Mrs. Balsam and her tea trolley out on the roof <laughs> and shut them out there. Oh, I oh, no, 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 nobody could do it. Oh, no, I mean, oh. Any witnesses, Sir Gregory? Apparently not. Oh, dear, what a pity. <laughs> would she, uh, would she know them again, sir? Unfortunately, no. Oh, yes, well, that is hard luck. Yeah, yeah, they were wearing masks, apparently made of carbon paper. Oh. When she came in today, she found a note pinned to her overall. It said, I was holding a tea party on the roof. When she went out there, these thugs leapt from behind the chimney stack, rushed past her, back through the door, and locked it behind them. Damn cunning, I must admit. Yes, indeed, Sir Gregory, yes. Yeah, why they did it, goodness knows. Think she might have been up there all week if the minister hadn't seen her. She wouldn't have starved, Sir Gregory, if she had her tea and rock cakes, I presume. Yeah, well, her worst... Her worst hazard was that shocking draught up the Irvine, you know. Yeah. But I might have assumed the trolley system had broken down and cancelled it. Yes, you might. If the minister hadn't seen her. How did he come to do that? Well, he was walking down Whitehall when his attention was arrested by a rock cake hitting him on the nose. <laughs> First class brain, the minister. He sensed at once that something was wrong. He would. What a coincidence she hit him with that one throw. No, 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 no. Mrs. Balsam was firing cakes at random using a rude catapult. <laughs> Where did she get the elastic, Sir Gregory? <laughs> yeah, well, as uh, I said, uh, uh, worst hazard was that shocking draft up the air. <laughs> but in fact, no one suffered any harm. You know, it does show the weakness of the tea trolley system. Even if the operative turns up, trolleys are always liable to be, uh, hijacked. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm sick and tired of the whole business. Now, you mean that's the end of the trolley system? Yes. Then we can go back to making tea in our offices? No. There will be no tea breaks of any kind ever again. Tea and coffee drinking in all ministry buildings will cease utterly forever. Starting now. Good day. <laughs> Brothers, silence please, brothers. I have put the situation clearly to you. In banning tea, the management has committed an outrageous breach of our terms of employment and an outrageous breach of faith. Now, what does that add up to? An outrageous pair of breaches. <laughs> the time has come for us to act. <laughs> I think even our reactionary brother, Lennox Brown, will agree. Don't ask me. I'm fed up with the whole thing. Thank you, brother. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> so what form should our protest take? I ask you, brother Richard Lamb. No, uh, can't you leave me out of this? Leave you what, brother? Out. Well said, brother. One out, all out. <laughs> Richard Lamb says strike. <laughs> Here is the news read by John Curl. There is no sign of a break in the Whitehall civil servant strike. In Parliament, MPs complained bitterly about the affair and in particular the fact that all the ministries were on strike for three weeks before anyone noticed. <laughs> the Prime Minister agreed that the situation was grave. A vast number of houses were going up and several nationalised industries were in danger of showing a profit. <laughs> 
He said the sinister figure behind the strike was a notorious agitator called Lamb, known as Dickie the Red. <laughs> Government buildings in Whitehall are deserted, but it's understood that many ministry staff are continuing to come up to London every day from force of habit. Most of them are passing the hours in St. James's Park. <laughs> Oh, I'm sick of this strike. I wish you hadn't started it. But I didn't, Mildred. I wouldn't even have joined in, only I didn't want to be a blackhead. <laughs> a black leg, Mr. Lamb. <laughs> well, I'm fed up with it. I mean, it was fun at first, making our own sort of office in the park, but it's gone on so. Morning, Mildred. Oh, hang my bowler on that branch, will you? Morning, <laughs> man. Uh, we've kept your usual deck chair for you. Ah. We managed to scrounge this litter bin for your umbrella. Ah, oh, thank you, too. Thank you. Uh, why are you lying there in your underwear? I'm waiting for my trousers to dry. What? The breeze blew Mildred's eyelashes off, and I had to wade among the ducks to find them. <laughs> oh, I see. I wonder why Mildred had a couple of feathers on her eyelids. <laughs> anyway, these briefs of mine are perfectly decent. Well, I suppose they're decent, but there's a nasty moth hole down by the knee. I wish this strike were over. Yes, me too. Still, you know, we've been lucky sitting out here in the fresh air. I was against the strike all along, you know. Mind you, you know, we're lucky we've had this heat wave. Oh, glory. The news headlines at 12.30. The ministry strike is over following an emergency meeting held this morning under an umbrella in St. James's Park. <laughs> Ministry officials voted overwhelmingly for a return to work. I'm sorry, I'll read that again. Voted overwhelmingly for a return to their places of work. <laughs> In return, certain tea drinking privileges will be restored. It is nice to be back in the dear old office. By Jove, yes, yes. Though I dare say works pile up in our absence, you know. Uh, don't worry, I did it all before you came in. Yeah. Done all our work? Yes, Ron. I've sharpened the office pencil and watered the pansies. <laughs> well, well done. Mind you, I had yeah. a nasty niggly feeling there was something else to be done. Ah, the export order for Marboni. Yes, oh. yes. Rather a tricky one, that. Well, could have been, too. Could have been, but I, uh, <clears throat> I had an idea. You? All right. Stand by your desks. Tea up. And don't look so pleased with yourselves. It's still from out the hern. <laughs> Perhaps you'd kindly leave it and go. This lot was made three weeks ago before the strike. <laughs> I've just warmed it up. Oh, careful, Mrs. Balsam. You've spilt some on the desk. It's taken the varnish off. Well, drink it up then, because it's all you're going to get. Oh. Well, I don't know. There's one thing about Mrs. Balsam. She's not two faced. How do you know? Well, if she had two faces, she wouldn't wear that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she seems to have beaten us, doesn't she? After all that, the boycott, the strike and everything, we're still stuck with that awful trolley service. Ah, I think uh, I may have the solution at last, too. Really? Mm. Came to me in the park, you know. Mm -hmm. I was standing by the lakeside, and I had a wheeze. <laughs> you are bright one. An idea on the exports and an idea on the tea. Yes, they're not uh, unconnected, huh? actually. Mm. I must ring Sir Gregory. Ah, oh, there you are, both of you. Ah, oh, talk of the devil. Oh, hello, Sir Gregory. <laughs> hello, Sir Gregory. Sir Gregory. Yeah, you, yes. How are you? Mm. Six weeks ago, I gave you a vital job to do. Finding suitable vehicles to send to Marburne, remember? Uh, yes, Sir Gregory. Now you're going to tell me it's all buttoned up, aren't you? Yes, Sir Gregory. Failed again. What? They needed light, low vehicles to carry ammunition and supplies through narrow jungle paths. I suggested something suitable to their trade mission last week, sir. They say it's ideal, and they'll take all we have. Good gracious. Mind you, it will mean a sacrifice. These vehicles are much used here. Oh, never mind, never mind. Exports must come first. If they can take all we've got, we'll give them all we've yes, got. Yes, well, I'm delighted to hear you say so, sir. What are these vehicles, by the way? Ministry tea trolleys. What? <laughs> oh, it'll finish our trolley service, of course. But as you say, we must make sacrifices. Oh, uh, yes, yes, of course we must. We don't see why the staff need tea trolleys anyway. 
Why don't they make their own tea in their offices? What a brilliant idea, Sir Gregory. Yeah. Well, get those trolleys dispatched at once. I must go and tell the Prime Minister about my brainwave. <laughs> Ran, you've surpassed yourself. Yes, yes, I must admit I have. Mm. <laughs> yes, there's not much more to say, is there? Yeah, just one thing. Oh, what's that? I'll just pop my electric kettle on and we'll all have tea. Oh, you <laughs> I'm so glad you bought that. Muddling through as the men from the ministry were Richard Murdoch and Derek Guiler. Also featured were Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, Patricia Hayes and John Graham. The programme was written by Edward Taylor and John Graham and produced by Edward Taylor.